Number 9. The Somali Coast Starting in the 1980s, the Calabria, the Italy-based Dragetta criminal organization, has been involved in the dumping of radioactive waste. In 2005, former member Francesco Fonti accused the crime syndicate of sinking 30 ships filled with toxic waste off the Somali coast for companies that didn't want to pay what it would cost to get rid of the hazardous materials properly. That same year, drums of radioactive waste washed ashore in the northern part of the country following a tsunami. The catastrophic wave damaged the containers, causing them to leak hazardous materials into the environment. People got sick with a variety of alarming symptoms, including strange skin disorders, difficulty breathing, abdominal bleeding, and mouth bleeds, according to the UN Environment Program spokesperson Nick Nuttall. UN officials who were familiar with the situation told the press that the symptoms were consistent with radiation sickness. In addition to the damage done by the Drangheta crime family, many other European companies dumped toxic waste off the northern Somali coast on their own accord during the 80s. The practice increased dramatically after the Somali leader Mohamed Siad Barry was violently ousted in 1991. After the Fukushima disaster in 2011, concerns resurfaced regarding the dumping of waste off Somalia, and more of it was found, indicating that the practice was still going on. Unfortunately, the organizations and companies that dump their radioactive waste off Somalia are taking advantage of the country's largely unregulated waters and its lack of a functioning government. Number 8. Fukushima In 2011, a powerful earthquake struck near the Japanese coast. A mega-tsunami followed. The disaster caused severe damage to the Fukushima Daiichi power plant in Okuma, leading to a nuclear meltdown. Radiation levels skyrocketed to 10 million times higher than was considered normal. Nearly 100,000 people living within an 18-mile radius of the plant were evacuated from their homes on a moment's notice. Only a handful of former residents have been allowed to return to villages on the very outer reaches of the exclusion zone. Over a decade later, cleanup at the power plant is still in its early stages and radioactivity is still detectable in the water. Meanwhile, nature has reclaimed much of the surrounding area, taking over the yards, parking lots, and homes that people had no choice but to leave behind. In 2016, photographer Tetsuro Takahana visited Fukushima's so-called difficult-to-return-to zones when he captured eerie images of overgrown cars and buildings. In one photo of an athletic field, only the goalposts remain visible as the plant life conceals the remaining evidence of a former human presence. Speaking with Japanese news outlet Asahi Shimbun, Takahana said that it was as if time had stopped, and yet the grass and trees continue to grow. Number 7. Runet Island Runet Island is part of Inueta Atoll in the Marshall Islands, located halfway between Australia and Hawaii in the South Pacific. Between 1948 and 1958, the U.S. performed dozens of nuclear tests at Inueta Atoll. During a cleanup effort in the 1970s, workers built a concrete dome on Runet Island to house the radioactive waste left behind from the tests. Nicknamed the tomb, the structure was intended as a temporary fix until the American government devised a long-term decontamination plan. But that plan was never put into action. Today, the concrete is crumbling as radioactive waste seeps into the soil below the building. A major weather event like a typhoon or storm surge is all it would take to rip the dome out of the ground and disperse its contents into the ocean. The damage is still being done anyway, as contamination continues to leak, causing locals to fear for their health. During the 1980s, the U.S. returned Inuetak Atoll to the Marshallese government. The American government claims that it's fulfilled its obligations to the country, but Marshallese authorities argue that they lack the resources to clean up the mess that the U.S. left behind. Runet Island was quarantined decades ago and remains off limits today. But this doesn't necessarily protect residents from the harmful effects of the waste. Number 6. Lake Karachay Lake Karachay was located in the southern Ural Mountains of eastern Russia. Starting in 1951, the Soviet Union used it as a dumping ground for nuclear waste for a nearby nuclear facility owned by the Mayak Production Association. The Russian government kept Mayak and the activities at Lake Karachay a secret until 1990. Western scientists first gained access to the site two years later. They discovered an 11-foot-thick layer of radioactive sediment at the bottom of the lake. Even more alarming, the highly toxic water had made its way into nearby freshwater sources. Unbeknownst to the local residents, around 65% of the population had become poisoned years earlier. In another shocking incident disregarding public health entirely, the lake had dried up in 1967. Radioactive dust blew into nearby villages, causing residents to fall ill. 
because the clandestine facility and the secret city its operators lived in did not exist on any maps. Nobody knew exactly what or whom to blame when locals suddenly became sick. To prevent the problem from worsening, the government filled the lake in with cement. It didn't fix the problem entirely. Certain nearby sites will remain polluted for centuries to come. But the measure seems to have reduced the dangers associated with Lake Karache itself, which at one point was capable of releasing enough radiation to kill a person within one hour of standing alongside a shoreline. Experts admittedly don't know how dangerous Lake Karache is because even the most skilled radiologists lack experience with managing such a heavily contaminated site. But they're monitoring it the best they can and will continue to do so for years to come. Number 5. Goiana Institute of Radiotherapy The Instituto Goiana de Radiotherapia, Goiana Institute of Radiotherapy, was a private radiotherapy institute in Goiana, Brazil. In 1985, the business relocated to another site, leaving behind a capsule containing 3.3 ounces of radioactive cesium chloride. The institute failed to notify the authorities as required by law. When the abandoned site was partially demolished, the hazardous material was left unsecured. One night in 1987, two men trespassed onto the premises and took some of the radiotherapy equipment, thinking that it had some value as scrap metal. They placed the items into a wheelbarrow and took them to one of the thieves' homes, where they began to take the equipment apart. Unbeknownst to the pair, they had taken the canister filled with radioactive cesium chloride. Later that night, both men began to throw up from radiation sickness. They nevertheless continued to dismantle the equipment. The next day, one of the men became dizzy and began having diarrhea. He visited a doctor where his illness was blamed on something he must have eaten and he was told to go home and rest. Meanwhile, he continued to tamper with the radioactive items and eventually sold them to the owner of a scrapyard. The business owner noticed a blue glow coming from within the canister of cesium chloride. Believing it had supernatural powers, he took it inside his home and showed it to his family and friends, including his six-year-old daughter who smeared the glowing powder on her body. He then sold some of the radioactive materials to another scrapyard. In the meantime, the ailing robber's hand swelled up, ultimately requiring some of his fingers to be amputated. The mysterious infection spread to his arm, which also had to be cut off. Two people died from exposure to the cesium chloride, drawing the attention of national authorities, who soon began investigating and scrambled to contain the problem. By then, some 250 people had been exposed 20 of them showed signs of radiation sickness and required medical treatment. To this day, survivors of the incident receive monetary compensation from the Brazilian government, but it doesn't solve all their problems. In addition to having elevated health risks due to their exposure, they are forced to face radiation-related prejudices in their everyday lives. Number 4. The Polygon The Soviet Union was responsible for a lot of radioactive pollution that persists in many of its former territories today. One of those sites is a 7,150 square mile area of land in Kazakhstan, known as the Polygon. From 1949 to 1963, the Soviets performed dozens of above-ground nuclear tests there. They performed underground tests until 1989. Consequently, health authorities estimate that as many as one and a half million people were exposed to radioactive fallout. In addition to being subjected to acute bursts of radiation, residents were exposed to low doses of it over time. Researchers have kept tabs on people living in and near the polygon, as well as their kids and grandkids, to learn more about the health effects caused by the radiation. Their findings reveal elevated cancer risks and indicate that the effects of radiation on cardiovascular health may be passed down hereditarily. The fallout appears to be spread mostly by high winds, which distribute the hazardous material in different directions from the polygon. Residents have been dealing with its effects for decades now. In addition to cancer and cardiovascular issues, they blame the fallout for a host of health problems. Researchers haven't been able to link those additional problems to the radioactive fallout, but are continuing to investigate the matter in hopes of better understanding the disturbing legacy the tests have left behind. Any future findings could influence ongoing debates whether or not it's a good idea to reduce carbon emissions by expanding nuclear technology. Number 3. Ramsar Most of the places on today's list are radioactive all thanks to pollution from human activity, but the Iranian city of Ramsar located along the Caspian Sea is different. It contains the highest measured natural background levels of radiation in the world. In certain areas, the doses far exceed the maximum recommended levels for radiation workers. Ramsar's excessive radiation levels are caused by the local geology. The groundwater boasts a higher than average concentration of uranium, 
making it naturally radioactive. The water makes its way into local hot springs, which locals and tourists alike eagerly bathe in without second thought. Scientists have pondered whether it's a good idea to relocate Ramsar's residents to a place with less radiation. One group of researchers from the University of Rochester and the Rafsanjan School of Medical Sciences in Iran think so. In a study, they pointed out that natural radiation has existed since life began. So in one sense, it's nothing new for humans, animals, and plants to be exposed to it. But the team found a correlation between the abnormally high levels in Ramsar and the rate of cancer among locals, leading to some troubling concerns about whether it's a safe place for people to live. For now though, the city remains inhabited and life continues as usual. The future of Ramsar and whether its people will eventually have to move remains to be seen. Number 2. The Hanford Site Located along the Columbia River in Washington State's Benton County, the Hanford Site is a decommissioned nuclear production complex owned and operated by the federal U.S. government. It was established in 1943 as part of the infamous Manhattan Project and was home to the world's first scale plutonium production reactor. Plutonium produced at the site was used in the world's first nuclear bomb as well as Fat Man, the atomic bomb that was dropped over Nagasaki. The material was also tested at the Trinity Site where the first nuclear weapon was detonated. The Hanford site was expanded during the Cold War. It grew to include nine nuclear reactors and five plutonium processing complexes where the plutonium for most of the US nuclear arsenal's more than 60,000 weapons was produced. While many major nuclear technological advancements were made at the Hanford site, the outcome wasn't all good. Most of the nuclear reactors were shut down between 1964 and 1971, and the final reactor was finally decommissioned in 1987. The property was highly contaminated with over 53 million gallons of high-level radioactive waste left behind. Government authorities devised a cleanup plan in 1989, but unfortunately, a lot of troubling damage was already done by then. Official documents have revealed that the activities at the Hanford site released significant amounts of radioactivity into the surrounding area, including onto the land and into the Columbia River. Additionally, it was found more recently that one of the site's underground tanks was leaking hundreds of gallons of radioactive waste into the ground every year since 2010. The pollution remains a problem today, threatening local fish and wildlife and their habitat. For now, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Damage Assessment, Remediation and Restoration Program is evaluating the potential effects of the radiation on ground water, surface water, sediment, soil, plants, animals, and the environment. The organization is also looking into the possible impacts on public health. This information will help experts determine what the proper next steps are for mitigating future damage, although it's sadly too late to prevent a lot of harm that's already been done. Number 1. Ozersk Tucked into the forest of Russia's Ural Mountains is a small city surrounded by barbed wire fences, gates, and guards. It's called Ozersk, but for a long time it didn't exist on maps and its 100,000 residents were wiped clean from the census. Gulag prisoners built Ozersk in the late 1940s as housing for employees of the nearby Mayak nuclear plant. The people who lived there simply vanished from mainstream society. They were contracted to live there for eight years, and their contact with the outside world was extremely limited the entire time. Life was good in many ways for the residents of Ozersk. They enjoyed much nicer housing, food, education, and healthcare than the people who lived outside the city received. Even today, the material quality of life remains well above average there. But there's a dark side to this reality. Ozersk is one of the world's most contaminated cities, and the government conveniently kept this information hidden from residents for decades while they suffered from health issues and even died from radiation exposure. Mayak dumped nuclear waste into nearby bodies of water, leading to extensive pollution in the area. Residents are free to leave the city, but must choose to stay despite the risks. Outsiders are allowed to visit, with special permission from the Russian secret police, but are kept under strict tabs during their stay. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the world's most radioactive sites, let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe. Bye for now.